I'm a former foreign correspondent for the New York Times. I was overseas for 20 years. I spent five years reporting on the conflicts in Central America in the early 1980s. I spent seven years in the Middle East, uh, much of that time on the Palestine-Israel conflict. I also covered the first Gulf War. I went into Kuwait with 1st Battalion, 1st Marines. I was in Basra during the Shiite uprising. I uh, was taken prisoner for a week and then released. Well, having spent 20 years on the outer reaches of empire, uh, I'm acutely aware of the crimes of empire. I'm talking about the American empire, as well as their proxies. Very hard to come back to the United States after two decades uh, and not work as hard as I can to make other Americans aware of what is happening, what the empire is doing, uh, the whole nature of permanent war uh, and what its consequences are. So, found that 66% of likely voters strongly or somewhat agree that the U.S. should call for a ceasefire, a percentage that rises to 80% among Democrats. Joining me to discuss the grassroots effort to impose a ceasefire is Medea Benjamin, a co-founder of the feminist anti-war group Code Pink. And now we're seeing the call for uh, another tranche, enormous tranche of money, hundred four billion dollars uh, that the administration is asking for uh, that is just a uh, mana for these uh, weapons companies. Public transportation is a wreck. Our cities are decaying and our infrastructure is collapsing uh, and that's because uh, we divert 50% uh, of all discretionary spending towards a war industry that is unchecked, uncontrolled and unregulated. Uh, and that is a symptom of late empire, and that is fueling the conflict with Ukraine, it's fueling the aggressive posturing towards China, it's fueling the unchecked orgy of violence uh, against the Palestinians, Yemen, uh, and, uh, and so although I've, you know, probably a lonely voice, it's visceral for me. use the Swiss passport in Iran. And also in Gaza, I would use my Swiss passport. It's just easier than being an American in some places. Well, the problem is that the, the United States, really, its diplomatic service has been rendered uh, impotent in the sense that, you know, even when I was overseas, the embassy was controlled by the military and the CIA. And the ambassador often didn't even know what they were doing. Uh, the CIA has transformed itself from an intelligence agency into a paramilitary organization. I mean, the only people who truly know war are the people who see it. Uh, that we all have the capacity to be the oppressor under the right circumstances. I learned that violence is intoxicating. I've seen people when they kill in orgies of violence. It's as if they're drunk or high. Um, I learned that war gives meaning to empty lives. I've learned that war is addictive, not just to soldiers. And that's something that I, as a longtime war correspondent, had to struggle with because you don't fit in anymore to the world not at war. Uh, and yet the world at war is a very unhealthy, sick environment. Yet you keep wanting to go back to it. I, I, I didn't, I never done drugs, but I think it's similar to a drug addict, that at least you're back in an environment where uh, other people understand and share your very dark pathology. So in, in a war, you know, everything's stripped away. All of the facade is stripped away, and it's this kind of visceral experience with evil I mean, war is about death. It is the cult of death. It is the celebration of death. Everything about war is about crushing all of those forces that nurture life, familial, social, artistic, political, cultural, everything. <laughs>